welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Food Chain Magnate. This is a two to five player card drafting deck building economic game where you take the role of CEO of your own fast food chain. You'll be hiring and training employees, marketing, and opening new restaurants trying to become the best fast food chain. How do you become the best fast food chain and win the game? By having the most money when the bank runs out of money for the second time. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components setup and how a round and turn work in Food Chain Magnate. Now let's look at components. You have map tiles, the turn order track, house tiles, garden tiles, marketing tiles and their corresponding busy chips, employee cards, milestone cards, bank reserve cards, your player menu or player aid, your restaurant and turn order tiles, your CEO cards, your tokens, you have soft drink, beer, lemonade, pizza, and burgers. And finally, we have the money. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're gonna be setting this up for a two player game which takes nine steps. Step number one, lay out your cards. You're gonna lay out employee and milestone cards. There's a diagram in the rule book for a suggested layout. Step number two, you're going to remove cards and tiles based on the number of players. Since we are playing a two player game, we are only going to have one of each of the 1x cards that you see here. Also, since we're playing a two player game, we will be removing billboards 12, 15, and 16, and our map size will be three by three. Step three, you're going to set up your map. Based on the number of players, select the number of tiles randomly for your map. Also randomly turn the tile. Step four, we are going to fill the bank. We're gonna place $50 times the number of players. So we're gonna be placing $100 to create the bank. You want to make sure to use a good amount of ones and fives to create your bank. Step five, you're going to create your pools of tiles and tokens. Make sure that you remove the particular tokens based on the number of players. So since we're playing a two player game, we're going to take out billboards 12, 15, and 16. Step number six, choose a restaurant. You will choose one of the restaurants and take the restaurant tiles, a CEO card, and a set of bank reserve cards. Step seven, determine the order of play. Randomly select turn order using the turn order tiles and the turn order track. Step eight, place your first restaurant. In reverse turn order, place your restaurant on the map. And finally, step nine, set goals. You are going to secretly choose one of your bank reserve cards and then place it in a stack next to the bank. This amount determines how much money is put in the bank after it runs out the first time. So this allows you to set goals if you want to play a longer game then you would want to put 300 in there. And if you wanted to play a shorter game, then you would put the 100. Your choice is a secret until the bank runs out of money, in which case the choices are revealed. After you've chosen your bank reserve card and placed it next to the bank, you can discard the other two bank reserve cards. After you've discarded your cards, collect a player menu and begin the first round. The player menu is a player aid for a round and it shows all of your available employees. Now let's take a look at rounds. Each round consists of seven phases. Phase one is the restructuring phase. Each player will simultaneously choose workers to use this turn and place them face down. They are considered working and the rest are played face down and are considered on the beach. For the first round, the CEO is the only card played. The CEO is always at work. 
On the beach, cars are the only ones that can be trained. The CEO can have three employees reporting to them indicated on the card. If you put more people to work than our slots, you play the round with only your CEO and the rest are on the beach. Then cards are revealed and structured in a pyramid form with your CEO at the top of your pyramid. Phase two, order of business. During this phase, players will choose turn order on the turn order track. The player with the most open slots chooses their position first. Ties in slots go to the order from the last round. So in this example, both players have the same amount of open slots, meaning based on the last round, the first player from the last round would get to choose their position first. Phase three, working from nine to five. In turn order, players perform all of their actions in a specific order. Most of the actions for the employees are optional, except for your pricing manager, discount manager, luxury manager, CFO, recruiting manager, HR director, and waitress, which have mandatory actions. When performing actions, you first recruit. This is where you hire employees. You can only hire employees at the entry level position, which are the employees that have the play symbol in the upper left corner of their card. The second action is to train. This is to advance one person, one step. You can only train people that are on the beach. Most cards have their list of options for training at the bottom of their card. Then we initiate marketing campaigns. Based on the employee, you would determine type and duration based on the instructions on the card. And then in the top right corner, you see the range. Then you place the campaign on the map and determine what to advertise. You would place the tokens that you want to advertise on that tile. The number of tokens should correspond to the duration of the campaign. Then you would place the corresponding busy tile that matches your campaign tile on the marketing card. Then you would get food and drinks. If you have any kitchen staff or buyers, you would gain food or drinks based on their instructions. These are the green employee cards. Then you would place new houses and gardens. If you put to work a new business developer, you would place a house or garden. When placing a house, you put it into any empty area on the map, as long as it is connected to at least one road. When placing a garden, you must put it next to a house printed on the map tile. Each house can only get one garden. Gardens must go on empty squares. Then finally, you would place or move restaurants. These correspond to your red employee cards. If you put to work a local manager, you would place a new restaurant within a range of three tiles traveled by road from one of your existing chain's restaurant. You would play that tile with the coming soon side up and it would open at the end of the turn. If you played a regional manager, you would place a restaurant anywhere on the board provided that the entrance connects to a road. You may also pick up one of your existing restaurants and move it somewhere else. Restaurants would be placed with the welcome side face up. Also, as long as the regional manager is active, Restaurants of that particular chain have a drive-in and are considered to have entrances in each corner. Phase four, dinner time. This is where houses go out and get food. Only houses with food tokens or demand tokens go and get food. If there is a house with demand tokens, check to see if a chain can deliver all of those types to that house. If there are demand tokens, Check to see if there is a chain connected to the house by road that can deliver all of those types of tokens. If not, the inhabitants will stay home. If there are more than one that can deliver, competition ensues. You would determine the unit price plus the distance to determine where the houses will buy their food. The standard unit price is $10. The houses will buy from the lowest result of the unit price plus the distance. If two chains have the same number, then the restaurant with the most waitresses is the one that they will buy their food. If both have the same number of waitresses, then it would go to turn order. You would then discard markers from the house and the restaurant and then collect your money. Also, gardens give double the unit price. Phase five, payday. Players choose to fire or keep any of their workers, and then pay $5 per worker with the money stack symbol in the bottom right corner of the card. 
Phase six, marketing campaigns. During this phase, marketing campaigns run and houses get demand tokens. Houses may have a maximum of three demand tokens or they may have a maximum of five demand tokens if they have a garden. Then you'll remove one from the marketing tile, letting everyone know that the duration has gone down one. And then finally, phase seven, cleanup. During the cleanup, you will discard any unsold food or drinks. All coming soon restaurants are now flipped to the welcome side. You will return any empty marketing campaigns. Cards are taken back into your hand. And then finally, if any milestones were achieved, the rest of that milestone are turned upside down and are unavailable for the remainder of the game. Then you're ready for the next turn, starting with phase one. And then rounds will continue on until the bank runs out of money. When the bank runs out of money the first time, you would flip over your reserve cards and put that amount into the bank. And then you would look at each of the reserve cards. Whichever number occurs most determines the number of slots all CEOs will have from the next turn onward. If there are an equal amount of two numbers, the highest number determines the slots. So after breaking the bank for the first time, in this game, each of our CEOs would have three slots for the remainder of the game. Then rounds would continue until the bank breaks a second time and then the game would end. You would then count your money and the player with the most money is the most successful fast food chain and wins food chain magnate. 